Pavan Goenka from M&M &M, try and talk about the new launches, the growth outlook that they may have, the improvement that they are foreseeing in the UV market share as well. And of course, what is it that they're aiming for uh, in order to get a higher tractor market share going as well? Pavan Goenka, MD at M&M. &M. Uh, Mr. Goenka, thanks so much for taking the time out and joining us today. Now, everyone's been eagerly waiting for the Marazzo launch and finally it's happening next week. Tell us what makes it your best design vehicle so far. How is it that you're going to position it and a bit about pricing as well if you can highlight that. Well, uh, obviously we are very excited about uh, what's coming up uh, on Monday, uh, 3rd of September. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the big launch of Marazzo happening in Nasik. Uh, we always like to do our, brand, our launches in the plant itself because uh, that way you get a better feel for what the product is about uh, and how it is being manufactured. Uh, the buzz, the excitement that I see about Marazzo launch uh, is, is quite high. Uh, everybody is waiting to see the vehicle, waiting to uh, know the price uh, and we are quite confident that uh, this vehicle uh, will create a buzz uh, after launch uh, in terms of the number of people who are interested in buying this vehicle. Uh, we obviously are uh, leaving no stone unturned in terms of ensuring that uh, we have absolutely the perfect product to offer to our customers and also ensuring that we price it uh, in a way that the customers find it uh, an and, and, uh, exciting price. So we are working on that uh, and uh, we will know in, uh, in, in, in six days whether we have succeeded or not. Right. Second half is going to be a fairly busy time for you in terms of new launches, I guess. With key models lined up, how confident are you of winning back the lost market share in the UV space? Well, I won't want to comment. I won't want to comment on market share because that depends also on how the industry is going to do. Uh, but when I look at the three launches that we have, two of them are in the volume segment, uh, the Marazzo and the S two zero one, and one of them is in the premium segment, uh, the the G four Exton. And between three together, uh, a volume of eight thousand, eight and a half thousand per month uh, should be something that's very reasonable for us to expect to get. What we don't know is how much of that may be cannibalization. And though these three products are in very different sub-segment than our current products, and therefore I don't expect too much cannibalization, but there will be some. And the market share and the overall volume growth will depend on that. Uh, but, but I would still expect to see a very, very healthy uh, volume growth percentage-wise, and therefore a market share growth. Sure, Mr. Goenka, during a con call last month, you mentioned about hiking, uh, you know, largely uh, the UV guidance. Uh, closer to the second half of the fiscal. Any update on that, given that you're expecting a good uptick in volumes post the launches? Uh, we're going to wait uh, till after August and perhaps even September uh, before we take a firm call on uh, guidance for uh, festive season. Uh, up to now, up to July has been pretty good. Uh, the July itself, the month of July was a bit of a slowdown, but uh, YTD July has been pretty good. Uh, and if that kind of growth continues, uh, this will turn out to be one of the biggest uh, growth year for the industry in almost all segments. Uh, and therefore, the indications are all positive, but I want to be a little cautious and wait uh, at least till the month of August, if not September, before we change the guidance. Okay. And you've clocked in a, a strong double-digit margins for four or five years now. What are the margin levers you're betting on to sustain this momentum? So far, uh, I believe that we have uh, stayed true to that, uh, that word, that we have managed to keep our margins uh, good. And in fact, uh, what we have seen in the last two, three uh, quarters is about the highest margin that we have seen historically in the tractor business. Uh, the levers are the same always, uh, the lever of uh, plant productivity, the lever of material cost, uh, the lever of uh, uh, spreading our uh, fixed cost over a larger volume. And none of those levers ever completely dry up. Uh, it always gets more and more difficult as we move on, but they never completely dry up. And uh, as long as volumes keep increasing at a healthy pace, uh, we will uh, be able to maintain our margin. Right. You're also looking to expand your market share uh, from 43% to 50% we hear. How is it that you plan on achieving this number? Well, market share expansion uh, uh, is on, on, on three parts. Uh, we have Mahindra brand, uh, we have our Swaraj brand and we have a new brand called Trackstar. 
Uh, Trackstar is a is a small volume game right now, but we do expect that over time, four or five years, Trackstar should give us two to three percent margin, uh, two to three percent market share, and that will be significant addition. And uh, obviously, a little bit, uh, half a percent, one percent on each of our uh, two brands uh, will give us three four percent. Now it's uh, easier said than done because in tractor industry, I've always maintained there are no weak players uh, and market share has to add up to 100 for the industry. And therefore, for us to gain, somebody else has to lose. And therefore, I'm not going to become uh, uh, very definitive about it that uh, this year I'm going to get there, and next year here, and next year here. Uh, what we have talked about is a statement of intent, uh, direction that we want to head to. But uh, tractor industry historically always have been very stable in terms of market share. And uh, never would you see a change of more than half a percent, one percent market share for any specific brand. Uh, and therefore, uh, to get to 50 is going to be a long haul, not something that's going to happen next year or the year after. Mr. Gwanka, last month, you know, Bajaj Auto disrupted the two-wheeler market by announcing a price war to gain a larger uh, chunk of the market. Do you see a similar pricing strategy take place in the passenger vehicle segment too, given that competition is also uh, intensified? I wouldn't say a price war, but I would say that industry has become a lot more competitive. Uh, and... Uh, if there is no segment or sub-segment uh, where anybody has a, a kind of a, a monopoly uh, situation. And therefore, every player has to look at their pricing in relation to competition. Uh, yes, you are right that every player wants to increase market share. Some perhaps uh, uh, go a little more after market share and compromise with uh, maybe financial performance and some probably uh, balance market share and financial performance. But I don't see anything which I would consider a price war. Right. The picture painted for us uh, looks quite robust, at least for the next one or two years. But what about FI21 onwards, especially since that's when uh, BS6 rollout will take place? Uh, do you expect any disruption, slowdown on the back of that? Well, I would uh, definitely think that uh, just when we get into BS6, there will be a little bit of a effect of the prices going up. Uh, and the prices, uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, which segment you talk about, uh, for diesel vehicles will probably go 60,000 to 1 lakh rupee up, uh, for trucks maybe as much as 2 lakh rupees up. So that's a fairly significant, uh, significant increase in price and therefore there will be a pre-buying uh, and there will be a sticker shock uh, when the new prices come in. Uh, so I would expect a temporary slowdown, uh, but after six months I guess the market will, will, will get used to it and after that it will be business as usual. So any dip that I see will be a short-lived dip for about three months, six months, nine months of that time frame. Lastly, how is the EV business working out? Uh, you know, Fame2 has just been announced. How does it affect MM's um, mobility business? Well, EV business uh, has just gotten a boost from the Fame2 scheme, and that has been approved by, uh, uh, by Government of India, which has to now go into to cabinet and then get approved. Uh, and, that would, and that's a longer-term commitment of five years rather than having a six-month, one-year kind of commitment. So I think with the Fame2, with a five-year commitment, the industry players will become more serious about in investing in product, technology, and capacity for electric vehicles. And we, we should therefore see a faster ramp-up uh, for EVs is uh, starting about now. Uh, now, having said that, uh, I've been saying something similar for a long time, uh, and therefore perhaps have a lower believability about how fast uh, EVs can ramp up. But what I can tell you is that for, for Mahindra, we have many small wins. When I say small wins, meaning wins meaning that at least there are 12 to 15 uh, fleet operators uh, 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 or aggregators who are who now have a fleet of electric vehicles from Mahindra. And now it's only a matter of time when these people are able to do their pilots. And once their pilots are over and they get into the, the volume ramp up, then it can happen very rapidly. So the ESL order of phase two, uh, which will start uh, executing uh, very soon, and all the various fleets that we have give me the confidence that uh, uh, three to six months from now, we would be more supply constrained than demand constrained. Mr. Goenka, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you this morning. Thanks very much for being so candid and sharing with us your strategy and plans.